All right, so I know everybody's been asking me about tips. I got tips for you today. Everything you wanted to learn about barriers is coming up right now. Yeah. Build it up. One thing about cyclocross that's probably stood out the most, especially if the first time you've ever seen it, are the barriers. The dismount, the carrying the bike, jumping the barriers, and the remount. The barriers are probably the most quintessential cyclocross thing in cyclocross. So we're gonna break it down step by step and try to make this as simple as possible so you can repeat this in your drills and get it dialed. Let's just jump right into this. Let's start with a pre-unclip. As you're approaching the barriers, sometimes it's a good idea to pre-unclip if you're not super stoked about unclipping right at the barriers. Pre-unclipping can kind of get you out of trouble. So the idea here is to unclip your shoe and place it immediately back down onto the center of the sole. Next up is unclipping your right foot and begin to swing it around the back of the bike. You're gonna swing your leg all the way around until your right foot meets your left foot right behind the pedal. This gets you in the ready position. Once your right leg is finished swinging around to the back of your left, place your right hand on the top tube. At this point, you can kind of coast into the barriers. Some of us use it as a way to kind of mentally prepare yourself and give yourself a breather. As you'll see in this case, he does it immediately at the barriers, but for a lot of us, that little bit of extra pause gets your mind ready that you're gonna get into the next thing. This is the point where everything gets fun. You're gonna unclip your left foot or basically just slide your left foot off if you've already pre-unclipped. Once your left foot is free of the bike, you're gonna plant your right foot. That right foot plant, when you hit the ground, is not meant to stop you, it's meant to propel you forward. It's supposed to continue your momentum and try to keep that same speed that you entered into this process. In this example, he's gonna only take two steps. For a lot of us, we're gonna end up taking a little bit more steps. That timing doesn't always work out, so sometimes you're gonna take a few steps and then make sure that you're getting over the barriers. All right, it's time to get that bike off the ground. You want to make sure that the saddle is on the outside of your forearm. We are not doing any suitcasing in this example here. The definition of suitcasing is picking the bike up and tucking the saddle underneath of the arms. This limits you in a lot of ways. Mainly, if you tuck it close to yourself, the saddle sometimes actually gets stuck under your armpit and limits the height that you can get the bike off the ground. For those with limited arm strength or those that are not tall enough to get the bike off the ground using the top tube, an alternative method for carrying is to reach down to the down tube and pick it up from there. That way you get much more leverage and you're able to get the bike way off the ground. Regardless if you've taken a few steps or you're doing the two-step version that you see here, you're going to plant your jump foot and depending on your speed and your jumping abilities, you're going to have to figure out what that distance is from the barrier. Sometimes it's farther away if you're going fast, sometimes it's closer. Problem is if you get too close, you're going to end up clipping your toe on the barrier. Obviously, the idea is to clear the barrier. You want to make sure that your leading foot and that front wheel are nowhere near the barrier. Those things do not move. One technique that you can use to make sure that your front foot clears is to make sure that you have a high leading knee. You kind of exaggerate this jump. You make sure that your knee is up high and obviously your foot will follow. So these exaggerated motions, the lift and carry will keep that rear wheel from striking the barriers. Now, in this example, we only have one barrier, but in every race that you're gonna come across, you're gonna have two barriers. For most of us, the idea is to keep the same height, keep it up high and level, and that'll prevent you from striking either the front or rear tire when you get to the next barrier. Sweet. You made it over the barriers. All right, at this point, you want to place the bike down. Do not drop it. You see this a lot when people get tired, they just simply drop the bike and everything starts bouncing around. One of the things that's common when you drop the bike is that you can also drop your chain. The other problem with a bouncing bike is that the saddle isn't in the spot that you expect it to be. One of the ways to make sure that the bike is not bouncing is when you place it is to keep your hand pressure down until the bike is settled. At this point, you want to continue your forward momentum by continuing your run. As you run, you're going to place your carry hand that was on the top tube, you want to place that back on the right hood. As you're taking your steps, there's a few things that are going to happen. The bike is going to settle down. It also makes the timing for your remount easier. Let's start the remount. One way to set yourself up for success is to take a long leading step. This opens your hips slightly and it makes it easier for you to find the inner thigh. This is your target, always the inner thigh. So with the target of your inner thigh in your mind, you're gonna lift your right leg to clear the saddle as you spring forward off your left foot. 
One of the tips that I've heard many times is to concentrate rolling off the ball of your foot and springing off the toe. So your first contact with the bike, again, needs to be with your inner thigh. Conceptually, it makes it less about jumping and more about placing. You want to be able to place your inner thigh onto the bike and make it smooth instead of jumping and landing on your junk. And yes, both men and women have junk that they can hurt. Now the term Superman means that you've jumped completely into the air. Eventually, you're just going to land directly onto the saddle. So once you're off the ground and on the saddle, the next thing to do is to find your pedals. Now once you start this process, you're not completely on the saddle. As you drive your right foot down to connect with the pedal, you're actually going to pull yourself up onto the saddle completely. If your front right pedal is in the right place, then you've made the connection and you can start pedaling. If you can't find your pedals, kind of just start pedaling in a circular motion and your feet will eventually find the pedals. The idea here is to simply make the connection so you can pedal, keep your forward momentum, and eventually you're gonna clip in. Once you've clipped in on both shoes, get out of the saddle and sprint. It's go time.